Welcome again to another math tutorial. This is your math tutor, Sir NJ, and in today's topic, we will be discussing problem solving involving polynomial equations. Solving problems can be fun, but we don't know where to begin with, and sometimes it can be very frustrating. Problem solving skills can be improved greatly with consistent practice. So, problem solving skills is a process, and when we say process, it consists of several steps which are applied sequentially. So, the first step in solving problems is to understand the problem. You need to read the problem and then state the given facts. And then the second step is to plan your approach. So you need to choose a strategy. And then the third step is to complete the work by applying the strategy and using the algebra you know to apply the strategy to solve the problem. And the last step is you need to interpret the results. State your answer, then check. Does your answer make sense? Does it satisfy the conditions of the problem? So let's have our first problem. In the TLE class at General Emilio Aguinaldo National High School, the boys of G10 Pythagoras was asked to build a huge wooden rectangular container with a volume of 60 meter cube. The width of the rectangular container is 2 meter less than the length and the height is 1 meter less than the length. Find the dimensions of the container. So the first step is to understand the problem. So after reading and understanding the problem, sometimes it is much easier to understand if we draw a diagram. So here is our figure. So we have the following width, which is equal to x minus 2. The length is x, the height is x minus 1, and then the volume is 60 meter cubed. So the next step is to plan your approach. Choose a strategy, and the strategy to use is to translate the facts in the problem into an equation, then solve to find the answer. So we need to assign variables to represent the unknown. So let x represent the length. And then after that, since the value of the width is equal to 2 meters less than the length, then the equation of the width will be equal to x minus 2. And then we have the height, which is equal to 1 meter less than the length. Then the equation of the height will be equal to x minus 1. So we will use the formula. And the formula in finding the volume of rectangular prism is volume is equal to length times width times height. And then we will substitute. Our volume is equal to 60 equals the value of the length is equal to x times the value of the width is equal to x minus 2 times the quantity of the value of the height is equal to x minus 1. And then we will simplify. Bring down 60 equals x times x minus 2 times x minus 1 is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. And then after that, we will transpose positive 60. It will become negative 60. So the equation will be x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 60 equals 0. Then after solving for the general equation, we will find the roots of the polynomial equation. So we will solve the equation x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 60 equals 0 using synthetic division. So let's try using positive 6. So we will get the numerical coefficient of each term of the polynomial. So the numerical coefficient of x cubed is 1. The numerical coefficient of negative 3x squared is negative 3. The numerical coefficient of 2x is 2. And then the numerical coefficient of negative 60 is negative 60. So we will draw a line here and then bring down 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 
negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3, 6 times 3 is 18, and then 2 plus 18 will be equal to positive 20, and then 6 times 20 is equal to 120, and then negative 60 plus 120 is equal to 60. If the value of the remainder is not equal to 0, then 6 is not a solution. What it tells us is that if the value of the quotient are all positive numbers, then this is an upper bound, meaning to say there will be no greater roots than 6. So we will not have a root which is greater than 6. So let's try using positive 5. So we will get the numerical coefficient of each term. So 1, negative 3, positive 2, and negative 60. We will draw a line here. Bring down 1. 5 times 1 is 5. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And then 2 plus 10 is equal to 12. 5 times 12 is equal to 60. And then negative 60 plus 60 is equal to 0. If the value of the remainder is equal to 0, then 5 is a solution. So we will rewrite the answer in polynomial form or in depressed form. So we have the quotient 1, 2, 12, and 0. So the depressed form is 1 degree lower than the original equation. If the highest exponent is to the third power, so we will subtract it by 1. So this will be x squared plus 2x plus 12 is equal to 0. After this, we will solve the quadratic equation. So let's try using quadratic formula. So we have the numerical coefficient of the quadratic term, which is equal to 1. The numerical coefficient of the linear term, which is equal to 2. The numerical coefficient of our constant term, which is equal to 12. So apply the formula. x is equal to negative b positive negative square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then we will substitute. So bring down x equals negative. The value of b is 2. Positive negative square root of the value of b is 2 raised to the second power minus 4 times the value of a which is equal to 1 times the value of c which is equal to 12 over 2 times the value of a which is equal to 1. Then bring down x, negative times positive 2 will be equal to negative 2. Positive negative square root of 2 times 2 will be equal to 4. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 12 is negative 48. 2 times 1 is 2. And then after that, bring down x, negative 2, positive negative square root of 4 minus 48 is equal to negative 44 all over 2. So since we have negative number here inside the radical sign, so the answer will be imaginary. So we will reject the two solutions since they are not real numbers. So we have only one solution, which is x is equal to 5. So the length is equal to 5, this one. So the width is equal to x minus 2. So width is equal to the value of x, which is equal to 5. And then 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. So the value of the width is equal to 3. And then after that, the height is equal to x minus 1. The value of x is 5 minus 1. So the value of the height is equal to 4. So let's have the last step, which is we need to interpret the results. If the value of the container is 5 meter long, 3 meter wide, and 4 meter high, is the volume of the container is 60 meter cube. So we will check using the formula. Volume is equal to length times width times height. Then we will substitute. So 60 meter cube is equal to 5 meter times 3 meter times 4 meter. So bring down 60 meter cube. 5 times 3 times 4 is equal to 60 meter cube. Therefore, if this is equal, then our answer is correct. So let's have our next example. Find four rational numbers such that the product of the first, third, and fourth numbers is equal to 54. Also, the second number is 2 less than the first number, the third is 5 less than the second, and the fourth is 3 less than the third. So let's have the solution. So the first step is to understand the problem. 
you are asked to find four rational numbers that satisfies the given conditions. The next step is to plan your approach. So let x is equal to the value of the first number. And then the second number will be equal to x minus 2. Since according to the problem, the second number is 2 less than the first number. So that will be equal to x minus 2. And then the third number is equal to x minus 7 since the third number is 5 less than the second number and then after that the fourth number is equal to x minus 10 since the fourth number is 3 less than the third number so the product of the first third and fourth number is 54 therefore the equation will be x the first number times the third number which is x minus 7 times the quantity of the fourth number which is equal to x minus 10 equals 54. So this will be the equation x times the quantity of x minus 7 times the quantity of x minus 10 equals 54. The general equation is x cubed minus 17x squared plus 70x minus 54 equals 0. So the third step is we will complete the work. So we will solve the equation x cubed minus 17x squared plus 70x minus 54 equals 0 using synthetic division. So let's try using positive 2. We will get the numerical coefficient of the polynomial equation. So the numerical coefficient of x cubed is 1. The numerical coefficient of negative 17x squared is negative 17. The numerical coefficient of 70x is 70. And then the numerical coefficient of negative 54 is equal to negative 54. And then we will draw a line here. Bring down 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 17 plus 2 is negative 15. 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. 70 minus 30 is equal to 40. And then 2 times 40 is equal to 80. And then negative 54 plus 80 is equal to positive 16. If the value of the remainder is not equal to 0, then 2 is not a solution. So let's try using positive 1. So we will get the numerical coefficient of each term. So we have 1, negative 17, 70, and negative 54. So we will draw a line here. Bring down 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 17 plus 1 is negative 16. 1 times negative 16 is negative 16. And then 70 minus 16 is equal to positive 54 and then 1 times 54 is positive 54 and then negative 54 plus 54 is equal to 0 so if the value of the remainder is equal to 0 then 1 is a solution so we have our first possible solution which is equal to 1 and then after that we will rewrite the answer in polynomial form or in depressed form so we have the quotient 1, negative 16, 54, 0. So the depressed form is 1 degree lower than the original equation. So if the value of the highest degree of the polynomial is equal to third degree, so we will subtract 3 by 1, which is equal to 2. So the exponent will be equal to the second power. This will be x squared minus 16x plus 54 equals 0. And then after that, we will solve the quadratic equation. So let's try solving it using quadratic formula. So the value of the numerical coefficient of the quadratic term is equal to 1. The numerical coefficient of the linear term is equal to negative 16. And the numerical coefficient of the constant term is equal to 54. So this will be the value of a, b, and c. And then after that, we will use the formula x is equal to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then we will substitute x is equal to negative times the value of b is equal to negative 16 plus minus square root of the value of b is equal to negative 16 raised to the second power 
minus 4 times the value of A, which is equal to 1, times the value of C, which is equal to 54, all over 2 times the value of A, which is equal to 1. And then bring down X, negative times negative 16 is positive 16, plus minus square root of negative 16 to the second power is positive 256, negative 4 times 1 times 54 is equal to 216, all over 2 times 1 is equal to 2. And then we have x is equal to 16 plus minus square root of 256 minus 216 is equal to 40. And then over 2. And then after that, we will simplify. x will be equal to 16 plus minus square root of 40 will be equal to 2 square root of 10 all over 2. And then the simplified form is equal to 8 plus minus square root of 10. So we will reject the solution since they are not real numbers. So therefore, we have only one solution, which is equal to x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to the value of the first number and x is equal to 1, so the first number is equal to 1. So the second number is x minus 2. So the value of the second number will be 1 minus 2, which is equal to negative 1. And then, the value of the third number is equal to x minus 7, so we will substitute 1. So that is 1 minus 7, so the value of the third number is equal to negative 6. And then, the value of the fourth number is equal to x minus 10, substitute 1, so that is 1 minus 10, so the value of the fourth number will be equal to negative 9. So we will interpret the result by checking the answer. So the numbers are 1, negative 1, negative 6, and negative 9. It's the product of the first, third, and fourth numbers are 54. So let's try checking it. So we will multiply the first number, which is equal to 1, the third number, which is equal to negative 6, and the fourth number, which is equal to negative 9. So 1 times negative 6 times negative 9 is equal to 54. So 54 is equal to 54. Therefore, our answer is correct.